The Reason Over Rational and All Kinds of R's podcast is back for our fourth episode. The fourth episode may be the best one because we have the mo- one of the most colorful guests that we've had um, to date based on uh, his Facebook page, page and postings of recent. I, w- I watch his videos. He likes to talk. He shares opinions. Um, <laughs> and, and, he's, and honestly, I've known Gordon. This is Gordon Thornton, by the way. Um, say hi, Gordon. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, I've known Gordon for a long time. Um, we were real, t- real, real estate professionals together many years ago. Um, I'm going to guess around 2004 ish. Yeah, I think you're right. 2003, um, 2004. Yep. And then, um, and then you know, different, different cat, different, different things, life changes, and so on and so forth. We became realtor colleagues again for a little while, and then, um, and Gordon is becoming very adept and astute at um, real estate investing. Yes, my passion. We may or may not talk about a lot of this on this show, but um, but I will happily talk about that as we as we roll into it. But um, known Gordon for a while. We play in the same fantasy football league together. Um, you may be able to get a close up. I don't know if we can on the championship ring that sits in the center of the. Um, yeah, that's it, th- those who have not won the championship are allowed to touch it. Um, that was what Gordon just did. I currently own this. Um, I that. won the championship last year, though. So he did, but he didn't buy a ring for himself like no, I did. No, I'm um, I'm not that self conceited. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, so yeah, so so uh, you know what we do here on the podcast is um, is we talk about reason, reasonable and rational ideas and thoughts based on current events. Um, I um, love the fact that Gordon's here because I know he likes to talk um, <laughs> and. He's he's got opinions, and you know we have some we have some followers that are um, pretty adamant that all the only people that I would bring on were be, would be Republicans on the show. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint them. <laughs> right. um, and um, you know, so Rob doesn't like that because Rob's you know Rob doesn't like you know, Republicans either. So. I am a Republican. You are. I'm a registered Republican. Well, congratulations. When are you changing that? Well, I'm going to <laughs> not vote for Trump. So. <laughs> It goes down as a Republican voting for Biden. Ooh. <clears throat> but That's we, our girl Tulsi. Yeah, our, our girl Tulsi. Yes, yeah. we're, we're Tulsi fans. I know you are. Yeah, I don't blame you. Do you remember when I met Tulsi? I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she, she was a really good candidate. I'm surprised they kind of like uh, suppressed her right out. They didn't want her in the uh, running at all. It's because she was too far, too close to the Republican side. Too close to the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Too close to the middle, really. Yeah. I mean, she is. She yeah. should be the. Exactly. She should actually be the logo of our of our reasonable and rational podcast. Oh, well, she's um, going to leave the Democratic Party now. The only reason why she kept it is just to keep her seat. She lost her seat, so if she runs again. It'll definitely be uh, moderate, uh, libertarian, or mm. independent, or whatever they come up with. But mm-hmm. none of them can win it anyway. No. The, the way that in Hawaii, you know, the way know. things are currently centered. What are you? What are your thoughts on politics as far as uh, <laughs> how uh, how can um, how can I mean? There's a serious uh, issue in our country. Hundred percent. Do you want to keep this reasonable and rational? I want to hear your thoughts. <laughs> My thoughts on politics. Um, I do not like any party. I think the Democrats and the Republicans both are only out for themselves, and they really don't care much about. The, uh, the society that we live in ourselves and the people that are here. Yeah. Um, I think that this democratic primary itself is a gleaming example of how they can manipulate any situation and put the person in that they want in, in any way. Um, example is obviously that, you know, Peter Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar were doing a really good job, especially after the New Hampshire primaries, right? I think Klo- Klo- Klobuchar made it, even won the New Hampshire primary. Um, It might have been Sanders, I forget, but Klobuchar did really well. Um, And they were really close, and when Super Tuesday come, what a shocker, come Monday night before Super Tuesday, that they both end up dropping out Mm -hmm. because they were stealing votes away away from Joe Biden, and they couldn't handle Sanders getting the nomination and getting too many of the super delegates, right? right? So they had to rig that, and they had said, listen, you're going to drop out, and... Who knows what other sort of backside deal came on for that? Well, basically, I, the way I would see it, and Rob, maybe you can substantiate this: um, if they didn't do things the way Clintons want them to, I mean, they may end up dead. I mean, really, I mean, from what I understand, Epstein didn't kill himself. So, I mean, they either back out or you know run the risk of <laughs> the wrath of 
artillery. I mean, sure. you, you don't really want that, I no. don't think. But, um, <laughs> doesn't really have much power anymore in the Democratic. Hillary doesn't? No. No. How about Bill? <laughs> no. No? No. Are you sure? I think he's wrong. I don't think, I don't think, I think he's got other things to do. Bad, dirty things to do. <laughs> I mean, they're not as powerful as the Obama family is, obviously. But, I mean, Bill did just speak at the Democratic National Convention, you know, the no, same think, day they think, that. They think that people like him. Oh, yeah, they like him, you know. I don't know how much power S he has. Slick Billy. Oh, I, I will know. say that I don't think there's either party is for, for you know, middle-class working Americans. Neither. I, I mean, every time one of them claims that they are, it's a joke. Well, that's the that's the party line. So, social media drives all of that, right? So, um, anything that goes on to social media, even going into this, getting out of politics, but you can't get out of politics because everything, that every opinion that there is 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 a is a political opinion according to anybody who is. This, I guess I'm going to call them sheep because everything that happens right now. If you believe one thing, you're a Democrat. If you believe something else, you're a, you're a Republican. You can't mm -hmm. have your own opinion. Mm -hmm. You can't have your own thoughts anymore. Mm -hmm. And and that's um, it's ridiculous. I you know people, if I say, just like I said, I've had people call me out because um, because the first guest we had was clearly a Trump supporter, um, uh, Chris Shanahan, and um, and love that kid. Yeah, I, I mean, he's got opinions. He's got thoughts. Is you know, and, it, it, he's and a they're, smart kid. And they're 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 reasonable opinions. I have not seen. Anybody in the far left or the far right that are rational, they're irrational, and, and it's it's very frustrating to me because because um, uh, when did this all change? I, I've never been political. I, I've never even cared to be about politics. I never understood politics, and maybe it's because I I saw it the way I see it now as a youngster. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would why would why do we all have to vote for this one guy who um, who has who says all these things but nothing really comes of it? You know. Mm -hmm. Build a wall, okay. The wall built, no. Um, raise taxes, okay. Why are we raising taxes? Well, to pay to fund to fund something, whether it's the farmers or the or you know whatever. Something needs to be funded. You raise the taxes, but I have to pay the taxes. And what happened to the tax to the original budget? You know why is it, everything's a mess? You know it just goes <laughs> it just goes on and on. We just keep raising the debt ceiling. Yeah, you just raise right. the debt, but you raise the taxes to pay off the debt that we can never ever pay off. Exactly. And then you just print more money, particularly when you run into a pandemic and everybody just gets free money, which was great. I mean, if you're if you're the president of this United States right now and you're somebody who was out of work during the pandemic mm -hmm. and got paid more than you did when you were working, mm -hmm. how do you not vote for the guy? Mm. How do you say anything bad about the guy in this in this particular administration? Well, I think a lot of people will say that it wasn't Trump that did that. They will say that it, it was uh, the Democrats and Nancy Pelosi and <laughs> that were able to get that bill passed. Pass, to help sure. them. I disagree with that. Yeah, opinion. I, I, well, I mean, well, in that case, right, in this stimulus package, they had to they had to agree to something. Now, whether they had to give up something to get something and they uh, that that's what happens, I guess. But um, the more I learn about politics, you have to give up something to get something. Um, yeah, like you for, had to get like the. The Kennedy Museum got like two hundred and fifty million dollars and the trillion the budget. Like, what the hell does that have to do with the coronavirus? If right? you ever read some of these bills, I have not. Even at the <laughs> state level, yeah, you read some of these bills. It's like when you see a commercial like someone just uh, voted down a bill that would save babies. Well, mm -hmm. he voted down the bill because in that bill it said, you know, two trillion dollars goes to this guy's personal yacht. That's why he voted down the bill, not because it was going to save babies. Right. The things that they put in these bills. All the pork. Would, they, would, uh, it's quite interesting. It through. But that's politics, right? That's, that's, you, you get good at that, and then you become a good politician. Well, yeah. that's why I think that we need to have term limits, though. It's a very big problem inside our government right now. You know, everybody is asking for change because they're scared of the big orange guy that's in there right now. Right. So everybody wants change. But yet we want to put in someone that's been in politics for 50 years. Which screwed it up to begin with. Yeah. yeah. I just and, I just and, don't and understand. Go right, we're going to go right back to that with with the screwed with the change. Up. You know, at the end of the day, what, everybody what, knows. what specifically did because uh, there are things. But I'm just interested to see what screwed up in politics. regards to 
the uh, what Biden did that screwed up as a vice president? Well, so Biden's from Maryland, correct? Pennsylvania. Is it Pennsylvania? Scranton. They're all the same. Now, south of New York, it's all the same. Yeah, okay. until, you, until you get into the Carolinas. So, so what I would say is that, I mean, the people that he, the, the black vote, which is what he, he's trying to get, right? And that he's going after. I would say that the Democratic Party has actually made them more repressed than anything. Right? So they... If you look at all these Democratic-led cities, this is where all these problems are happening. And they've been in charge and in power oh, yeah. for years and I years and years. I watched The Wire. Right? Remember, did you see The Wire? No, I've never seen The Wire. Because it's exactly what you're saying. Is it? <clears throat> all of the, um, the African-American and the minorities that reach, like, <coughs> councilman or mayor, Bless you. Fall in, they end up being in the same crooked uh, <coughs> politician that was there before them. Yeah. So, like you said, they're not doing anything except helping their friends and lining their pockets. Mm. I just f find it amazing to me that we really want to have change, but yet we still want to keep Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, Chuck Schumer, uh, Mitt Romney, all these people that are in politics for over 40 years, and all of a sudden, they're the ones that we're going to rely on to make change when they've already had their chance. As far as I'm concerned, anybody that's been in there for more than two terms should absolutely not get anybody's vote, especially the people that are talking like they want to have change right now. Okay. It just makes perfect sense to me. Why would we keep on doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result? I think some really smart man said that's the definition of insanity at one point. He did. Yeah. Was that Genji's Khan? Or who was that? <laughs> no. That was... Uh... <laughs> Smart. Elvis. I think it was Elvis. Elvis. I, think it was Elvis. Elvis. Uh, I have heard that. You know what? I heard a good quote last night. Might have um, been Albert Einstein. Albert. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Something like that. One of the, one of those one of those guys. Um, I heard a quote last night. Yeah, it was kind of funny to me. Uh, Mr. From Mr. Miyagi, in fact. Um, I believe I looked it up after I heard it and laughed, and then I screenshotted it so that I would not forget it for tonight. And let's see. Is it in here? No. Um, I meet Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi, you some, know who Mr. Some Miyagi about is? Catching of course, flies I love him. with chopsticks. Daniel son. Yeah, Song chopsticks. Wax off. That's not it. So yeah. while you look for that, yeah. let's talk <clears throat> let's ask Gordon how so, what are the chances of getting term limits? Because the ones who vote on it are the ones who don't want it. Yeah, well that's not always here, but I would say we're the ones that are, keep electing these people. So it's really up to us to not vote them in anymore. I agree with the whole premise that, yeah, well, they're not going to ever pass the bill for term limits, but why don't we, just as a society, step up and not vote them in? Then there's nothing they can do about it. Because most people are not reasonable and rational. Right. Because most people are sheep. Sheep, right. And that's, it. that's the point. I, I, I think, what I think <laughs> we collectively, as a society, as a country, think that whoever we vote in to be the president has to tell us all what to do and how to do it. That's not accurate. That's not true. I've never, I've never believed that in my life. So how can everybody blame everything on Trump or back then blame, blame everything on Obama, blame everything on right. Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon, whoever, I mean, I can name, I can name at least 12 presidents probably. Mm -hmm. um, Very good. Yeah, that's pretty good. How many have there been? 42? In the 40s. In the 40s. <laughs> so, I don't know. This Damn is Van Buren. <laughs> This isn't appropriate. Um, all right, it's not. No, it is appropriate, but it's not necessarily specific to this particular topic. But um, it was funny when I heard it, so I wanted to say it again. So Miyagi's talking to Daniel's son, Mr. Miyagi. For those of you who don't know, from the Karate Kid, um, and Daniel's son being. Um, I think also, our audience is old enough to understand who Mr. Miyagi is. <laughs> um, I don't think our demographic is in the twenties. <laughs> Daniel, Mr. Miyagi says, "Now ready." Daniel says, yeah, I guess so. Miyagi says, Daniel-san, must talk. And they both kneel. So you know, they're kneeling. Picture this in the, in the show. Miyagi says, walk on road. Hmm? Walk right side, safe. Walk left side, safe. Walk in middle, squish like grape. Which is kind of interesting because, I mean, what the point of here, the point here is if you, if we're, the, the idea is, you, you know, we could be in the middle because everything far right, far left is so far out there. Mm -hmm. If you're in the middle, you're sane, reasonable, rational. But 
what we're kind of, what we're kind of saying is if we're in the middle we should have, we have our own thoughts we're not we're not being told what to do and how to do it and then following those like it's a like it's a playbook you know we're 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 doing we're we're making sense of things we're, we're, we're not mind. the squeaky wheel yeah the people in the middle are not the squeaky wheel the left far left and the far right are the squeaky wheel so they're getting the oil they're getting all of the attention but the people in the middle who i believe are the majority we're not, you know, we're not making enough noise. We're not making enough. And that brings me right back to this, why we're doing this, because I think we, we do need to make noise. And I think we're, and this is maybe just my little way of trying to get that to happen. You know, let, let's start, you know, yeah. sharing opinions, sharing thoughts, sharing things that, um, that make people think a little bit differently than what they're being told to think and then following through on. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, um, you mentioned uh, the black, um, the black community and the vote. Mm -hmm. um, earlier you know so you know a, a big a big um, lightning rod out there is black lives matter mm -hmm. all lives matter black lives matter blue lives matter mm -hmm. um, what, do you, what do you got there I think black lives matter has been marketed really really well in that the term um, is 100% correct but what black lives matter and their mission statement and what they actually stand for is nothing that I can agree with um, and when I say nothing that I can agree with means that I cannot agree with abolishing police. I mean, what are we going to do? I mean, you want, people want you to throw the word privilege around quite a bit, right? That's the most privileged thing I've ever heard out of people's mouths, thinking that we can just get rid of the police and everything's going to be okay. I mean, we're so privileged in this country to actually think that that would be okay. Right. People live in their own little bubble and they feel like everything will be fine if we just get rid of that and then we have social workers or whatever it is they want to do. And then they say, no, we don't want to get rid of it. We just want to defund it. No, no, no. Black Lives Matter wants to abolish the police. They want to get rid of a capitalist society. I can't agree with the premise of that. Mm. You know, has, has the African immunity, black community been suppressed? 100%. Of course, I'm a white man that's in my mid 40s. I understand that I have privilege. I do understand that, okay? I've been given a ton of opportunities in my life that maybe black men would not have had. I can admit that. And I think that there should be programs and there should be an awakening of, of us as, as middle-aged, middle-class white men that can acknowledge that we should be able to acknowledge that and not be afraid to acknowledge that. That's just the way the society's always been for us, mm -hmm. right? But at the same point, we can't, we can't just tell people that they're being, that it's okay to feel like they can't move forward. Like I feel like they, we're, we're trying to hold them back. Like people are trying to tell them to stay back and I'm like, I don't understand this. A black man can easily succeed in this world yeah. just as we can. You know, I, I struggle with this a little bit because um... I, I, I talked I, I'll talk to anybody about anything I met a, I met a guy the other day um, I wrote about it. it's in the um, uh, we're doing a newspaper also oh. um, and I wrote about it but I touched upon it but I met a guy the other day played professional basketball in Germany um, it was a golfing it was a golf tournament and I was there he was he was in the group and I, I asked him what he did and he said oh I, I played professional basketball in Germany so oh, wow that's pretty cool um, you know talked a little bit about it he had gone to Weber State in Utah and um, you know, so he played basketball. So, not to stereotype, but I'm sure he played with a lot of black people over the years. Played yeah. basketball. He played sure. basketball. So, um, so about an hour later, or maybe through the like, I don't know, eight holes or something, and and I get a, you know, I have my phone, and I get the, I get the message on the phone that says um, the NBA has decided to finish the season. And so this was the day that they, the day after they went out, they protested and didn't play on Thursday night, uh, yep. Wednesday night, and Thursday. Uh, they came out and said that they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna finish the season, mm -hmm. rather because nobody was nobody was sure really because I think the Lakers and the Clippers had decided that they did not want to finish the season because LeBron James team stinks. LeBron and uh, <laughs> and Doc and um, anyway, so I said, oh well, I'll, well I got to tell this guy because he's a basketball player. I said, hey, um, just just found out the NBA is going to continue the season. He says, what? I said, yeah, they're going to finish the season. He says, okay. Um, and I said, well, oh, you, you don't, you don't care. I said, I said that's interesting. I said, what are your, what are your thoughts? I mean, you know, a lot going on with, you know, people that I'm sure you're, you're, you've been friends with, and the NBA is pretty vocal. You know, what are, you, what are your thoughts? And he said, you know, um, 
the Black Lives Matter movement, I, I've got hundreds of black friends. He says, so I don't feel bad when I say this. He said, they need to fix themselves. They, they, the way they, the way they, the, the way a lot, a lot of the, and he said inner city, the way the, a lot of inner city kids are being brought up without, without quality life, you know, families at home, um, they're putting themselves in this position. They, they, they are, they are killing themselves. And, and I've heard that before in other, other, you know, from other, um, you know, other, whether it be on other television shows or whatever, I've heard that that's the case, and it does make some sense. Um, you know, if you grow up in a tough spot, yeah, one out of every hundred can get out of that tough spot. But what happens to those other ninety nine? Well, they, they turn into a bad. You know, they, they do bad things. They make bad decisions. They didn't have, they have a good, higher percentage of turning. Didn't to have good bad um, decisions. Yes. So he so basically said, you know, they need they need to get more funding to be able to do that. So which got me to thinking. I said, so okay, so who's going to fund it? You know, where does it come from? Mm -hmm. Earlier, we talked about somebody raising taxes to fund something, whether it be the Kennedy Museum or, mm -hmm. you know, so so is that our taxes being raised? Can they be raised to fund inner city development programs for family unity or something along those lines? You know, I would hope so. I um, think that we can easily allocate more funds into those, and that needs to happen. Yeah, and it should happen. Take right? it away from the defense budget, as far as I'm concerned, because there's so many tanks and so many guns that we already have. I mean, obviously, the, the, the safety of our nation is, is a very high priority. Sure. But we've pretty much over, over overloaded ourselves with that. Maybe okay, take yeah. some away from the defense budget and put it into some inner city development. I'm sure there's plenty of ways to do it, the, you know, plenty of ways to get the money. But but what you hear now, you know, and we but talk- But will the money get to where it's supposed to go? Well, that, that, that's what I don't understand. So why hasn't that been, hasn't that been happening? I mean, we, we, we've, we've passed... Um, we've that's pa something we should ask Joe Biden. Slavery was, what, a lot of years ago. You know, it ended many, many years ago. Um, you know, the, the 60s, it was bad. That's, but that's, we're talking 60 years ago. So what's been happening in these past 60 years? Well, you know, we, uh, okay, blacks can vote now. That's we good. We had a black president. We had a black president. Um, we now have a black Indian vice president candidate. Yeah. Um, so that's all good, but that's, it's not enough because what's happening, I mean, I, I saw, oh my God, I saw, um, you probably saw it, uh, John Cain posted the video today. Um, yes, the, the target. Oh my God. Um, young boy. Um, oh, the one that shot himself out in front no, of him? No, no, but, but we can touch oh, upon that. That was bad too. The young, this is a video, it was a, it was a made video, marketing video, I guess. Um, but young boy, young black boy is walking to school, I, I think is what he's trying to do, walk to school. Mm. Um, he walks from his neighborhood out to the bus station. He sits in the bus, um, you know, one of the, one of the glass, you know, mm -hmm. in the cities. Um, and they show the buses drive by and so on and so forth. I'm not sure, I, I thought the message there was, why isn't he being picked up? You know, why is, why is the bus not taking him to school, whatever, that's what I thought the message but, He's looking around. He's looking perplexed. He gets up. He walks a little further. He walks into a um, medical clinic, and um, door opens. And there's no words, just all music. And back on door opens, and he's sitting. He's got his backpack and the Superman logo on the back. And um, he's probably eight years old, Rob. Would say, you know, eight, maybe ten. Eight to ten, yeah. Um, and he walks in, and um, you know, the receptionist comes out. Uh, black receptionist comes out, and you know takes and you know kind of kneels you know to see you know eye to eye with the kid and you know ask him if he's okay he's kind of clammed up he's not saying anything he says well she says well where are your parents what are you, you know, what are you doing and he's just not talking so she kind of looks behind and the doctor comes out with the white you know the black doctor white you know white coat um clearly running the place i think that's an important part i hope is that they walk into this clinic and it looks like a uh there are a lot of affluent african-americans sure. well-dressed yep. A doctor, yep. nurses. Yep. And that's the point, I and think. I think that's important to point out. And thank you for doing that. That's still my story, though, so shh. Um, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so um, so the, 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 the black doctor comes over and, again, takes a knee. He says, hey, son, uh, you know, what's going on? How can I help you? What are you doing? He says, and, and out, of, out of view of the, um, of the camera, he says, can you help me get this off? And... Um, and he, and he, you can see that he's lifting his shirt up, but you don't see him lifting his shirt. You can tell that that's what's happening. And you, you're sitting there thinking, oh, what, what, what is it going to be? Like, oh my God, does he have a, like, is it his appendix or something? You know, is it, did he get stitched up and nobody's able to help him, you know, get fixed or whatever? I thought he was going to have like seven gunshot wounds or something like uh, that. Because so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, everybody so, was, was yeah. Like, everybody saw it, but, but you. So everybody's like, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So they were gasping. And, 
and, and I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it right now. I'll send you the uh, link to the video. Um, but they finally pan to it, and um, and it's a it's a bullseye mm. painted onto his body. Mm. And um, and like the initial thought, I was like, who the who the heck would do that? Who would paint a bullseye on the kid's body? And mm -hmm. that was my first thought. I'm like, oh man, that's that's how he's that's what he thinks. It's it's, it's what he's brought up. To. He's he's brought up to believe that based on what's happening. You know, around now, and it was extremely awesome. powerful. Yeah. And you know, and, and and the doctor actually says, "Son, I can't, I can't take that off. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I can do." You know, basically, and he hugs him, and then it kind of goes and it pans out. But um, pretty powerful stuff. And um, and you can't, um, I, you know, I am. Well, I, I get choked up thinking about it, but. You know, you mentioned white privilege. I, you know, I live it. You live it. We all live it. Mm -hmm. You can't ever understand what a black person has gone through in this country. Of course, um, we can. We can see it. We can see it in movies. We can see it in television. We can see it in real life right now. I don't think you can ever truly understand it. And um, and that was probably the most powerful video I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, but it it speaks to that. And I don't. I don't know what to do to to fix it. But I know that whatever it is, we're trying to do has to help some way and yeah I don't think that you me can fix it to be honest with you I, I'm, I'm a big believer that the only people that can fix anything in their life is themselves right so I feel like it, it's it's only the black community can fix it and that's I think that was the tangent and, that we kind of went down that yeah. road you, you mentioned that earlier and yeah. I, I have to I, I kind of have to agree with that but they but but they can't I don't think they can do it on their own I think we, I think we need to no, I think that need we need assistance obviously yeah but yeah. I just feel like you can't change anything unless you're willing to make the change yourself. Hmm. You know, and it's. And it, by the way, it's help. Sure. I, I don't. You know, I, I hate to minimize this because you know th there are. Um, you know, I, I was who was like I was having a conversation with somebody and they mentioned well, yeah, I guess if you think about it, you know, a lot of the gangs are all black gangs and they're shooting each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there are plenty of white gangs shooting each other too, mm -hmm. um, and there are plenty of white gangs shooting black gangs, and black gangs shooting white gangs. So it's not just blacks that are that are that are gangs and committing crimes and so on and so forth. But as MS-13, which is a Hispanic, it just seems like it seems like though that's right, where where, do, where do the guns thinks. come from that they get? <laughs> where did where do the drugs come from? The United States government. Exactly. <laughs> I. <that's laughs> Come on, guys. That's not true. <laughs> That's where it all comes from. <laughs> it is true. No, what you were saying, you're saying the government is, is, is pushing the drug, drugs into No, the, I'm saying the, the government looks the other way sometimes. Well, so it's not, it's not coming. Just like immigration. Way. Why is Idaho like 13% Mexican? The people come into this country illegally and say, you know what? I'm going to live in Idaho. That's a nice place to live. No. They're recruited by companies who own potato farms who need employees. So when you talk about Ill illegal immigration, a lot of it is done by ourselves. They are, the go US government has been providing transportation and recruiting illegal immigrants for decades, for decades. So it's not just who's sneaking in and who's going over a wall or who's coming in on a plane. Mm -hmm. It's a whole system that's all screwed up. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I, th these are things that I don't necessarily know, and I know I appreciate the fact that Rob does his research on this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if that's true, and Trump, one of his platforms is to clean out, um, clean that up, why is that such a bad thing in your mind? It's not. Oh. Obama d deported more people than Trump. I was down with that. Mm. Shh, don't say that too loud. People they don't like offended. people don't like that. People don't, don't like the that. Democrats don't like to hear that, and the Republicans refuse to believe that. Hmm. I feel like most people that I have conversations with, the majority of people are in the middle and really agree with a lot of everything that we say that we're talking about right here. The mm -hmm. vast majority of people, I think there's a, and, and I feel like there's a very small percentage of people that are way on the left and way on the right. Yeah, but for some reason, those are the, and you had mentioned yeah. it earlier, those were the ones that you hear only talking about. The it. loudest and the one that gets the most coverage are the most sensational. Right. And, and that's why, that's where, that's why we, I always, at the end, at the end of it, it seems like in any show, I always say, everything to blame is, is social media. Yeah. I, I think that, that's where it's all. That's where the blame. Is. I have a love hate relationship with social media. It's I, I, I love it. I love it I, at times, but, but sometimes it none of a lot of this. That's would well be so put. Public that's well put it. right there. <laughs> yeah. 
I love and hate because I mean, the, I have the same feeling about real especially estate, especially with business. you guys with your uh, with your businesses. Social media can be f- f- awesome. Yeah, help out a lot. Yeah, I mean, I've been yeah, able to connect with a lot of people yeah. that I you know just grew up with that I would have never seen, but sure. even live out of the United States right now that I'm able to connect with, which is great. You know? Well, I mean, that's that's I think that the idea that the intent of social media was originally to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that I don't think that anybody ever thought that it would be what it is now when they first started, you know, when, mm-hmm. when Zuckerberg first graduated or didn't graduate from wherever the heck he was, MIT or Harvard or Harvard. Was. And um, I don't think he ever dreamed it would be the what it has become, which is cesspool, <laughs> a cesspool. Right. You know, and everybody's just stating their own opinions on uh, unsubstantiated opinions in most in most cases um, about everything and anything. Mm-hmm. And it's OK because we're a free country. We can do that. Yeah. And not be in trouble for it. You know, um, the problem is the bullying that happens on there where you'll if you make a comment about something and it's if you have a different opinion than someone else, hmm. someone else that you don't even know about, you know, it's from someone else's friend. They see that they yeah. see your comment. They know nothing about what you're actually about. Then all of a sudden there's a and fight. they read this little three line thing right. and they attack you like you're some sort of a racist or something right. like you're like, you don't even know me. Right. And then you feel like you have to substantiate yourself. At least I do sometimes. And that, now I've kind of pulled myself away from it. Sure. Like, Listen, this, this isn't for me. I'm, I make timely posts yeah. <laughs> here and there. I'm just not, uh, I don't try to argue anymore. Yeah. Um, it's, it's difficult sometimes, though. Yeah. There's, yeah. So, um, but anything else you want to add? You know, you, you, I know you have a lot of thoughts. Um, we did cover some good, co- some topics, some mm-hmm. good topics so mm-hmm. far. And well, I th- you had mentioned. I mean, the thought that came to my head when you were talking about the the bullseye on the chest, yep. you know, and it, it, you know, while I haven't seen the video, and I definitely want to see it, and it's obviously very powerful. You know, it's not like um, the police are out there targeting African American community. So that's a good. That's a, I like that one because. I don't disagree. I don't think that either. I don't. I do think, I do think that there are police who have vendettas against certain perpetrators, hundred um, percent, because they've had experience with them in some some issue here or there or whatever. Um, it's hard to justify why somebody would get shot in the back seven times. It's um, a slippery slope. But you know, there, there's history there. There's you know, there's there were warrants with you know, there were bad things with that guy. Um, so he I, had a knife on him. He had a knife. He has kids in the car. I, I mean, there's but no one knew it was his kids. They could, and they were called in for a disturbance. So who's to say that the police didn't think that he was going into that car to hurt these kids? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and they're that this is what they're trained to do. Now I'm not defending anybody because we don't have the facts and we don't know. But there's <clears throat> definitely this whole thing of saying that the police are guilty without having the facts of the case and they're burning down the city before we even have any facts of the case yeah is to me just there's, there's no reason for it mm-hmm. the the um you know the brianna taylors and the um, george floyds and um some of the others that names escape me and i, I i'm embarrassed that i don't know some of the names but mm-hmm. um those things that did happen and have been substantiated to be wrong um you know by by the well, you can all admit that George Floyd was murdered. Sure. Right. I yep. mean, that guy's and Breonna a Taylor, same thing. And, and, you know, Breonna Taylor, though, is a different situation. Now, she was murdered, but th- th- that was the whole thing of she was in, a, was she, she was wrong in the wrong place, place at the wrong time. Yeah. It's not like she was targeted. Mm-hmm. And so whoever the jerk cop was that went in there riddling bullets throughout, mm-hmm. I mean, I believe, unless I'm incorrect in this, and correct me if I am, but the sh- they were in a hotel room or his apartment, something like his that. Apartment. Her boyfriend's apartment, was it? Mm-hmm. And the police did had the knock knock warrant, which means that you can just bust right in, right. right? And I think they had the wrong apartment. But the guy that popped up, I believe, had a gun and started shooting at the police. I don't know. So the police ended up shooting back, and she got hit by stray bullets. Sure. Right. So it was like a terrible incident that was awful. But at the same point, it's it's not like they were targeting her. Mm-hmm. And that easily it just could have been a white person as it could have been a black girl. And, and it's, you know, the other thing I guess is, you know, th- th- there are things like that happening to white people as well. I mean, it's, they're being shot when they shouldn't have been or, you know, held, you know, bad things are happening to all people, to not all just people. black people. But historically, um, it, it's, yeah. uh, I'm at a loss for it. Well, I think the, the narrative would be her 
her murderer is n- never arrested. Like when they, uh, that little kid that got murdered by that scumbag a couple Kayvon weeks Martin. ago. Kayvon Martin? No, um, that little kid. There's too many like, of the these. The kid who was riding his bike and the guy came out and just shot him. Well, he was couple, a white A couple kid. weeks ago. Yeah, a little white kid. White like kid. Five shot years by, old. A black, by a black Oh, oh that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that scumbag. Well, they arrested him immediately and he's in jail and he's going to mm-hmm. go to trial and go to jail for a long time. And if South Carolina has a death penalty, then bye bye. Mm-hmm. The narrative is that when a black person gets murdered by police, it takes public outrage for them to even get investigated or arrested or for something to happen. That's what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like George Zimmerman, was it George Zimmerman or whatever? Zimmerman, yeah. He was the one, he he ended up shooting, I th- maybe that was Tavon Martin. Yeah, that was Tavon Martin. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And he didn't, I mean, he got arrested, but he's not, I don't believe he's in jail right now. No, he got off. He got off, right, yeah. And he's, he goes around and signs uh, bags of Skittles for fans. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's a scumbag. Well, he went out one night. He went out to with a gun to Cost start trouble. some shit with somebody. Yep. Tavon Martin went to the store to buy Skittles. Now, just because he's a 15-year-old kid that happened to beat the crap out of this little shit Zimmerman, Zimmerman because they have a, a law, what is it, a... Stand your ground law or something in Florida. Mm. He was, uh, you know, defending himself and shot the kid, and so we got off. Mm. Yeah. Why did they fight? Uh, he was following him, and he just, Tavon finally turned around and said, "What's your problem?" And they got in a fight. Yeah. Zim Zim Zim, Zim was out looking for trouble. Mm. He was looking for trouble when he was following him down. I think he was like part of the neighborhood watch or something like that. Um, yeah. No, I don't think that there's an answer for it that will solve the problem right now without a doubt and I think that what we should look at is that there's been huge progress made throughout the years at least in the 44 years that I've been alive Um, and that's a good thing and unfortunately change doesn't happen overnight and this stuff that's happening and the awareness there's more people becoming more aware of what's going on which which is a great thing Mm. Um, you know and I'm learning stuff every day from it you know, I'm learning about my own prejudices that I didn't even know that I had, right? Um, that are just coming to the light. Mm-hmm. So, hey, yeah. that's a good thing. All we can continue to do is try and learn and be better as people, and then um, and then hopefully pass that on to our kids, and then the progress can continue. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's a great way to end actually this show because I um, and I'd love to have you back here again because um, yeah, you're you're you you had some good stuff. Cool. Um, uh, so that's uh, I think that's a wrap for um, series four here, Rob. You know, is that what it is? You have anything you want to say? <laughs> no, I think we've learned today that uh, Jim is very bad at doing racist Japanese voices. <laughs> Miyake. I thought I did pretty good. <laughs> I also have been, I've been practicing my Trump and my Obama as well. Excellent. I can't I can't do an Obama. I do a little bit of a Trump. Well, Rob, um, you have to think that. That's pretty good. That's not too bad. No, that's, that's bad. bad. That's not too bad. Right. I'll, I'll work on that and we'll, I'll, I'll do it. In you a, didn't even want to talk about your uh, fantasy football team this year and your draft or anything like well, that? Well, we talked about He's the, so against talking about sports on this show. <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's because we have a sports show that just doesn't do anything. Oh, I got no, we, we had poor attendance from a certain individual. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, we, maybe Gordon would want to be on a sports show. We should get somebody who is uh, really good at uh, sports sports betting. No, because it's legal now with the uh, the app. Yeah, that'd be a good show. Yeah, definitely not my thing. Yeah, yeah I don't know anything about Unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, I am good at it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, I don't know if you're good at it, but I, I was once really. You know, good. <gasps> <laughs> Paul King is in the house. He's made it. Episode five coming up. Cool. Um, all right, that's it for that's it for the show. All right. You gotta learn how to end a show. Yeah, I'd like to thank my guest. Out. We'll Out. talk to you next time. You one of those things. I'd like to thank my guest, Gordon Thornton, and Thornton, uh, Thornton and we'll see you next time. Thank, thank you. you.